Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Uh, in the first video I did, I showed on how to make this mobile uh, DIY wood, wood lathe stand for my, my new MIDI lathe. Uh, how to make the carcass. In this video I'm showing you how to make the drawers and make the, the cabinet, cabinet door and then I, I mount the MIDI lathe. My name is Mike Peace and I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. So if that's what you're interested in, you know the drill. Click on the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. A master woodworker does not point out all of his mistakes. I'm not a master woodworker so I made a lot of mistakes and I didn't edit all of them out. I'm starting with a cabinet door. Just using a piece of plywood for the cabinet door would have been a lot easier than making a shaker style door. But I thought the shaker style door would look nice and it matches the uh, under lathe cabinet on my Pyromatic that I made several years ago. So how hard can it be? Well, making the door reminded me of how rusty my general woodworking skills are. I rough cut the rails and styles from some cheery scraps I had and then I cut a recess for the panel using my table saw. This took multiple passes since the smallest dado I had uh, that I could cut with uh, on my Harbor Freight dado set is a quarter of an inch and that would make for a sloppy fit with the plywood scrap I had on hand which was a fat 3 sixteenths of an inch. After making the dado I investigate the slot cutting router bits I had because trying to cut the recesses right on four drawers with multiple passes on the table saw would really be a hassle. I understand a good carpenter measures twice and cuts once, but I'm not a good carpenter, so what I have to do is, once I get that measurement, do a trial fit and, and get a feel for it to see what am I actually measuring. Am I measuring the actual inside, or am I measuring the inside minus, minus part, of the, uh, part of the hinge, for example. Here's another example of that measure. Uh, measure twice, but then do a do a test uh, fit with a scrap. Uh, you make a mistake on this board, you've cost you some money. But if you take just a little bit of scrap like this, get your measurement, then you can do a trial fit like this. To make sure that everything actually actually is going to fit and has the right amount of of uh, of give for movement and everything. Now I can take that scrap of wood and actually set it up to get that dimension right against the saw blade. When I'm teaching wood turning occasionally I'll find myself uh, missing a step and it'll be obvious because the student will will do something wrong and I'll think oh I didn't explain that very well. Well to some of this is very similar in that unconsciously competent when it comes to wood turning and I don't always think about everything I'm doing and all the steps because I've got a deep memory. When I'm doing general woodworking, which I seldom do, haven't done much of it in a while, I am uh, consciously incompetent, which means I really have to double check myself very carefully. So uh, excuse me if it looks like I'm doing overkill on some of this. For some of y'all experienced woodworkers, you're consciously competent you don't have a problem with this. So, for example, going back to measurement, instead of measuring with a ruler and, and writing it down and doing calculations, go ahead and do that, but always verify. And if you can do a relative reference from one piece of wood to another, making you scribe marks, you're always going to be more accurate, because otherwise I'd be subtracting and going in the wrong direction when I cut this instead of leaving this longer. Uh, it just happens. Don't ask me how I know this. Because I've already cut this thing the wrong size once. I thought I needed a small taper here when this thing closed so it wouldn't catch. I wasn't sure how tight a fit this was going to have. Uh, so I had to uh, cut that on table saw with a few degrees. I routed a simple profile for the inside of the rails and styles. Uh, because I thought I needed to cut that slight taper on the top of the door piece so the edge would not catch when closing, I decided to make an auxiliary fence to bury the table saw in for this cut. Because of the simple butt joint on this uh, door, I felt like it was not going to be a strong glue joint, so I added a dowel to each corner for strength. 
I have to constantly remind myself to use the clutch number one for drilling and number uh, uh, rather number two for drilling number one when I'm mounting screws where it's a little slower and more torque. I use my birdcage all for starter holes for these uh, hinges on my cabinet. Uh, you can click on the icon if you want to check out that video on how to make one of these awls. Crap, I did such a nice job mounting the hinges on here. Unfortunately, I mounted the hinges on the top when they should have been on the bottom. <laughs> Even when I get the hinges on the right side, I wind up having to shift around a couple of times and readjust the hinges and fill the holes left behind. Bamboo skewers wound up great for this. Because the cherry I use for the rails and styles is slightly larger, three-quarter inch, than this three-quarter inch plywood, which is a little bit smaller, I had to actually shim the uh, the hinge to get this to 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 uh, lay lay flat. Otherwise, it wouldn't it wouldn't come all the way down. There's lots of options for drawer, jo for drawer joints. I've made a number of uh, shop drawers using the simple joinery cut on the table saw to provide more glue area held with uh, increased strength from a couple of screws or brad nails. My friend Pat with a pickup truck who helped me pick up the Baltic Birch loaned me a drawer joint uh, router bit so I thought I'd give it a try. With one setup you can do the routing for both the drawer fronts and the sides. One is vertical and one is horizontal. And then here's a close-up uh, of the final final joint. I really like the strength of this joint and it's easy to repeat once you get it set up. I use a slot cutter router bit instead of the table saw to cut the grooves for the drawer bottoms. I, I discovered when I got ready to make my drawers that the Baltic birch I'd picked up for the project was only 3 8 of an inch and not the half inch I thought I'd planned to buy. The 3 8 inch will be okay, but I wish they'd been the original 1 half inch that I'd planned for. I have a pretty good idea what this measurement is, but I go ahead and, and measure it with a, a ruler uh, to the stop where the false front's going to be and to the width. Uh, I subtract one, uh, one eighth of an inch for each drawer, so that's a sixteenth on each side. Then I go ahead and cut a door bottom that size, so this should be oversized. I'm going to have to trim this to fit because it's going to fit in, uh, it's going to have the uh, door side, drawer sides around it. But that gives me an opportunity to just double double check it for a sanity check to make sure that it's it's sliding sliding well. Okay, I've got one of these three inch ones squared up. Let's let's just double check it. That's my snug. It's rubbing. And it won't clear that one. Oh well. Nothing we can't fix. Just take off a sixteenth of an inch off all these pieces. I got pretty severe tear out. Uh, grain tear out because I had the grain running up and down instead of sideways on on these uh, these drawers. I should have suspected uh, the grain orientation problem when I set up the uh, test piece with the grain running the wrong direction using the uh, slot cutting uh, bit on the router. I'm going to use this piece of old growth pine that was given to me by my friend John Jones uh, and I'm going to use this for the uh, false fronts of the drawers. It's a it's it's a scrap piece left over from the false fronts on I made on my uh, other storage unit. It was one big board. I had to run it through the planer to clean up the surface and and reduce the thickness uh, down a little okay, bit. Okay, what's a stop uh, shop storage cabinet without a hand turn knobs? So I use a shop made screw chuck and turn a few knobs for this cab. It was fun to get back to turning for a little while. It didn't take long to make these these four knobs. They don't have to be perfectly identical. Uh, they're close enough. Actually three of them are cherry. One of them I didn't have enough cherry. Made out of Bradford pear with a little stain on it. And I've got a video on uh, turning knobs. Uh, if you click on the 
icon above you can get to that video I'm using a couple of coats of uh, polyurethane for uh, for finish okay I got two screws in holding the false front and I've got an inch and a half screw that I'm going to uh, put th through for fasten the knob down with I may come back later and add some glue but for the time being I'm just going to mount the screw on here and there we go and I, I buff the rubbing parts of the drawer sides with the Canuba wax just because I can and I just use regular uh, paste wax for any the runners uh, any place it's gonna gonna rub inside my lathe's in the next room still in the carton so let's push this over there and mount her up Time to load this on the stand. It's too heavy for me to lift up, so I've got to open the box and take off the uh, uh, banjo and the headstock. See if I can't make it a little lighter to lift the uh, bed up. I thought that, I wasn't thinking that the headstock, this is not a Pyromatic and the headstock is not coming off. So, Alright, now I got it turned over, I can go ahead and assemble the, the feet. I don't think you can use these feet if you're using the factory uh, original manufactured stand. Alright, I'll get the heavy end. You get the light end. Wow. Let's go there. Put our legs bent first, and then up, straight up. That's not bad at all, Mike. All right, now let's straighten it up. details about woodworking that uh, in making this this project and which was a lot of fun heck I even learned some things I probably knew at one time and 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 forgot but uh, making a uh, a lathe lathe stand is certainly a very doable uh, thing and it can be a very practical addition to your shop uh, it, it's, it's mobile if you missed the last week's video uh, I'll have a link uh, link below you can you can click to that I have a new video every Friday, so y'all come on back here.